Good morning. I'm ready to read from Ezekiel 23. Let's travel along in the Word of God and to see what did God say according to the words he gave to Ezekiel 23 to write down so we can put this in our thoughts and our minds. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our, and give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If my biggest confession today, according to the word of God, of change is stop worrying. And when you stop worrying, you stop talking. You, just, you don't talk, you don't worry. So all I can say is God is good and he's the truth. All right. Uh, many people look at um, Ezekiel 23 and they are apologetic for what they are about to read. I am not. I don't have the right to be ashamed. I don't have the right to be apologetic. This is God's word and I am meeting him and he said, I don't know who y'all talking about, but I'm God. And the things I say, I do not apologize. He said, if you don't want me to talk about it, then don't do it. So let, I'm going to use every way to be as graphic as God is, if I have to, I'm not graphic, I'm just going to read what he said, I didn't say this. I'm going to explain it the best way I know how. And if you are embarrassed of what God said, then he said, stop doing it. You can't be embarrassed of anything if you doing it and somebody talking about it. So God has given us his word, according to the lewdness and the sins of Jerusalem and Samaria. Very interesting. This is like going to the movies. And you've got to be old enough, according to the movies, to see this. But God said, no, you don't. That's the world's way. I've got something I want to say. And if it takes me saying it this way to get you to come to me, then he said, Ezekiel, I'm going to make you as hard as they are. If they doing it, I see it, and I'm going to talk about it. All right. Chapter 23. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, again, saying, Son of man. He said, Son of man, there were two women, the daughter of one mother, two women, two sisters, and they both had the same mother. And they committed whoredom, sexual uh, relationship without being married. And they committed whoredom in Egypt. These two sisters did. You don't let the word talk. So the man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. And those two women committed whoredom in Egypt. They committed whoredom in their youth. They started out being a whore. They were there, there were their breasts pressed. And there they bruised the tits of their virginity. Started out young, pressing on your breast. And he said the tits were bruised. That means they were hurt. You could tell that they had been through something. That's when they were young. And the names of these girls was Ola, Ahola. She was the older. And Ahola Ba, her sister. So we're going to call, God called these girls Ahola and Ahola Ba. Two whorish women. They got a whole, a whole, a whole lot. So you can remember that they were whorish. 
Oh, they go there. You know how people say they go there. You know how they say it today. A holy by her sister. And they were mine. Even though they were horse, they were mine. And they bear sons and daughters. These two girls, God is illustrating. Thus were their names. Samaria, these are the children's names. The children of Samaria is a whole lot. A whole lot. <laughs> it's not that. I'm just saying it so we can make it clear. And the, the first girl name, well, thus were their names. Samaria is a whole lot. And Jerusalem the other name of the children was Aholaba. Ahola and Aholaba. The two horse women. All right, that's God talking. He said, I'm going to bring this word and teach it to all. And I'm going to use every way I can. And I'm going to. Become all things, like Paul said, to all people that I might win some. So you might be a person that like strong sexual language. Well, God said, I'm going to talk about it today. And a whole lot played the harlot when she was mine, the oldest girl. And she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors. She doted. That means she became out of control. Just, just doing any kind of thing. Out of your mind. Weak. Just say, I do anything you want me to do. I, just, I got to get up and jump around in the church so that he can look at me. And I'm going to act. And then I'm going to say, the Holy Ghost told me. The Holy Spirit knocked me down. And I just, ooh, I just, ooh, I just. Anyway, she doted. On her lovers, the Assyrians, her neighbors. Now, you're talking about Samaria. And Samaria was where the Jews had intermingled with the Gentiles. And they had different understanding. They were the same people, but their understanding of culture and things that they believed was different. And so they went and slept with... Uh, um, Assyrians, the enemies of uh, God's people. They were clothed in, with blue captains and rulers of them, desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. They liked the men in their uniform. They like guys that, that I don't know what is, what is about a man in a uniform, but they can do some damage. Thus she committed her whoredom with them, with all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria. They came in dressed in uniform, and she committed whoredom. I mean, that's who I want to sleep with. Oh, I want to be a man in a suit. Oh. And with all of on whom she doted, still acting like she didn't get the sense, lost the mind. With all their idols, she defiled herself. You got into that, those men, those men got into your body, and they brought their idols. And these were God's people. Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt. Now she started out in Egypt as a young girl being a whore. And then she got older and met some Assyrians, and she said, I want you too. So God has illustrated what the church has done. You have left me from your youth, and now that you're older, you have gone messing with somebody else. For her youth that lay with her, she had not forgotten her whoredom in Egypt, but in her youth she lay with the Egyptians, and they bruised the breast of her virginity when she was young. They just just bruised that girl. And I'm almost sure they left a mark on there so they can understand. Oh, I've been there. Oh, I've been her. Oh I, oh, oh, I was sucking on her until it got a bruise on her. That's God talking. 
and poured their whoredom upon her. In other words, they left their semen on that girl. Wherefore, I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers. So you want to you wanna become one with the Assyrians? Then I'm going to allow it to be so. I'm going to deliver her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, upon whom she doted. All over that man. All over that man. Just, just loose. He said, you want them? Then I will, I will um, allow it. But you don't like the way I'm going to take over and allow it to happen. These discover her nakedness. They took her sons and daughters. God said, when I give you what you want, it ain't going to be like you think. They came in and they discovered your nakedness. That means they took advantage of you. They took your children, your sons and daughters, and they, they killed you. They killed her with a sword. With a sword. And she, Aloha, was that that's how to say her name? Ahola, I'm sorry. Became famous. Just like the woman caught in adultery. She's the talk of the town. A whole lot. A whole lot. A whole lot. And slew her with a sword and she became famous among women. Be a whore. A whore. You will. This, but she became famous. There was no secrecy about her whorish ways. For well, they had executed judgment upon her. So God said, I allowed them to execute death, judgment, my judgment on your ways. So God is talking about the northern kingdom of Israel. He said, you left me of Samaria and you played the horse part or the horse role. And I'm going to let those men who you slept with and wanted that bad because they look good in a suit or... Uh, uh, uniform, and they you, you became so silly all of us just uh, you just lost your mind. Now I'm gonna allow them to do what you need, and that's to take you out of this earth. They took your children and they killed you, and your name became the talk of the town. Now let's talk about her sister, her little sister, and when her sister a whole lot bought. Another horse woman. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not, anyway. If the slain on the street would be another hole. That's what the word said. And her sister, a whole lot, a whole lot of saw this. She saw what happened to her sister. Now, if you see God bring judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah, and then you in 2022 doing what you saw happen to Sodom Gomorrah's uh, consequences. You get, you know, you doing what they did, and you don't pay attention to what what your big sister did. Let's see what happened. And when her sister Ahola a Ahola, God called both of them Ahola, and one of them was Ahola Ba, saw what happened to her sister Ahola. She was more corrupt. Now, instead of her saying, I'm going to back off of this. She was more corrupt in her inordinate love that she, than she. She said, God said she was more wicked in her activities of sexual uh, encounters with men than her sister. You probably know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And in her heart more than her sister in her whoredoms, in her whoredoms, more than her sister, in her whoredom. She was a bigger whore than her sister. Did more whorish activities. She doted, lost her mind, upon the Syrians, her neighbors, captains, she wanted the men in suits, and rulers clothed most gorgeously the men, which is looking good. Horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. Ooh, I can't. Ooh, oh, 
Now she's older. Then I saw that she was defiled, God said. That they took both one way. Both of them did the same thing. Sister dead, but the sister alive went down the same road. And that she increased her whoredoms. But when she saw men on a picture portrayed online, on Facebook, on internet, on, on Google, just when she saw men portrayed up on the wall, all she saw was a picture. The images of the Babylonians or the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, they had on something red, like, oh, I'll just get, ooh, look at the red bottom. Oh. Girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding and dyed a tie upon their heads, and all of them princes to look to. In other words, they had positions. They were preachers. They were officers. They was of the government, and they were military men. And I want one. All I got is a picture. After the manner of the Babylonians of Charlie, the land of their nativity. They looking so hard at these ungodly men until they just look at the picture. It ain't even real yet. And as soon as she saw them, now she was looking at the image with her eyes. She's got her eyes. Ooh, ooh, there they are. She doted upon them. She jumped around like a drunk woman, a weak woman. I just lost. I, ain't nothing working but your emotions and your sexual vibes. You doted on them and sent messengers unto them in Chaldea. You did everything you could to get these guys' attention. God said, this is my wife. This is my church. He said, you, you played the harlot with another God. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love. It's God talking. And they defiled with her, and they defiled her with their whoredom. Gave this girl some type of sexual transmitted disease. Defiled, messed up. And she was polluted. I mean, polluted means you messed up. With them, and her mind was alienated from them. When they got through with you, you didn't even want them. Because of what they did to you. He said, when the church leaves my word and play around with the world, world's way of doing things, you ain't going to like yourself. You ain't going to like what they did, and then you're going to have something that nobody don't want. But since, since so many people doing it, and everybody said, well, it's almost like every other person got some type of sexual transmitted disease. Excuse me. And she had lost her taste for these guys. She was alienated from her. As my, as, okay, go back to them. She was polluted with them and her mind was alienated from them. In other words, I ain't thinking about them no more. I'm done with them. I got saw what they had and I don't even want them no more. Mess me up. Oh, but you you had that picture, that image of them, and then when they really showed up, they showed you what they had. See, them clean suits don't mean they had a clean body. Oh, God ain't through. He told Ezekiel, he said, he, I'm you dealing with some hard-headed people. He said, I'm going to make your head as hard as that. That's why God said, Ezekiel, say this. So she discovered her hoarders and discovered her nakedness, talking about the uh, Babylonians. Wait a minute. She discovered her hoarders and discovered her nakedness, then my mind was alienated from her. Then God says, since you won't return to me, then I'm going to leave you. You want them? I can't be. I'm not going to be in the presence of all of that. You can't come to me in darkness. He said, I'm going to be alienated from her, like as my mind 
as my mind was alienated from her sister. So the same thing that I did to her sister, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to leave my presence. I'm going to leave. I'm going to take my stuff. And whatever. when I move, God said, there's no protection. Still, yet she must, after, God said, still, after I have moved, and she's, then he, you ain't kid enough to know that I'm not there no more. Like that girl said, nah, Ichabod, God has departed. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms and called to remember. So she took her mind. He said, he got to the point, your body was not desired. So you had to play with your mind. Yes, she multiplied her whoredoms and called him to remember the days of her youth. She said, oh, I remember the day when I was, what she said? Well, and she played the harlot in the land of Egypt. Girl, you know, the Egyptian men, something else. Girl, you still be thinking about that too? Mm-hmm. Girl, and I know they bros me, girl. They, ooh, when they get through with you, you just see all kind of marks on you. But she doted on them lovers whose flesh, uh, whose genitals is as the flesh of a donkey, of asses. Well, I looked it up online, I want to see. She said, when I think about them Egyptian men, this is God saying, after you don't nobody want you, physically, touching you, you went in your head and start thinking about what happened to you when you were a young girl and start thinking about the Egyptians and their oversized body parts of a man. And whose issue is like the issue of a horse. When the semen came from them, it was a lot. That's God talking. Thus you call to remembrance the lewdness. He said you went back into the wild thinking of your youth and bruising your tits by the Egyptians for the paps of your youth. Talking about what they did to your breasts, your tits or teats. He said that for Oholaba, little sister, thus said the Lord God, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will raise up the lovers against you from whom your mind is alienated. I'm going to bring the ones you don't want. I'm going to bring them Babylonians. I'm going to bring them Nebuchadnezzar. And I will bring them against you on every side. You want to play the horse role? You know the man that gave you that disease? I'm going to bring them in. The ones you don't want. The Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, the Peacock and the Shoah and the Koah and all the Assyrians with them, all them four. He's like, I'm going to add, I'm going to bring all your men to the second one, which is the little sister, which is Judah, Jerusalem. All of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses. So I'm going to give you a man that you definitely got what you want. You don't want them because you know they dressed up in their suit, but they get they got some dangerous uh, things that leave a mark on you once they're gone. And they shall come against you with chariots, wagons, and wheels, and with an assembly of people, a lot of people, which shall set against you buckler and shield and helmets round about. They're gonna be ready to charge on you. And I will set judgment before them. I'm going to tell them exactly what to do. And they said, judge thee according to, your, to their judgment. I'm going to leave you into the hand of the enemy. Some crazy folk. When we as the body of Christ leave the word of God, he said, I will allow you to be under the people that you left me for. And I will set my jealousy against you. And they shall deal furiously with you. They shall take away your nose. They're going to cut your nose off. And then they're going to take your ears. They're going to cut off your ears. And your remnant shall fall by the sword. Your children shall fall by the sword. Who are those with you? They shall take your sons and daughters and the rest residue shall be devoured by the fire. 
These people do not care. Anytime we don't stay in the word of God and we go outside the word of God to get our directions for daily living, you are under a somebody who don't care nothing about your nose or your ears and will give you a disease that nobody else wants you. He said, after all of that, they shall strip, after they kill you, they shall also strip you out of your clothes and take away your fair jewels at the funeral home. I mean, now, wherever your body is, they will take your stuff. Thus will I make your lewdness to cease from you. You're going to stop it. And your whoredom brought from the land of Egypt, so that you shall not lift up your eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt anymore. You're going to be talking about them horses and, and donkey uh, sexual parts anymore. Because you don't want nothing from that donkey when I get through with you. For then the Lord said, Behold, I will deliver you into the hand of them whom you hate, into the hand of them whom your mind is alienated. You want it that you don't want to be around. And they shall deal with you hatefully and shall take away all your money, which you labor for, and shall leave you naked and bare, and the nakedness of the whoredom shall be discovered, both your lewdness and your whoredoms. When they, when they, now everybody going to know what you're all about. Because I'm going to put you in the hand of people who care nothing about you. When we walk away from God's word, we walk into the care of nothing. I will do these things unto you because you have gone a whoring after heathen. He said, that's why I'm doing it. You won't stop. I asked you to stop. I told everybody Jesus met, he said, go and sin no more. Don't stay in that place. Don't do that. He wasn't just saying that like, as casual like, you look nice today. He wasn't saying that. When Jesus spoke, he said, I meant every word I said. Go and don't do it anymore. I will do these things to you because you have gone a whore and after the heathen and because you are polluted with their idols. I'm doing this because you left me. And God is not, he's using a sexual content, but his relationship with the people he loved, he said, I'm trying to show what it's like and you understand sex. So I'm trying to show you what it's like for me to be the husband and you to be the wife and then you walk away from me and go after somebody else can't do nothing for you but pollute you. He said, that's what I'm talking about. I told Ezekiel to use this graphic illustration because somebody going to hear me when I talk like this. You have walked in the ways of your sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into your hand, the cup of death. Drink it. Thus says the Lord God, thou shalt drink of your sister's cup deep and large. Big old cup. Your sister covered like this. And still had poison in the kill But you didn't have sense enough to understand that what I did to your sister was enough. But I had to increase what I'm going to do to you. Because your sins were greater. One, one thing you knew better. You saw what happened to your sister. But you wouldn't listen. Thus said the Lord God, thou shalt drink of your sister's cup, deep and large, thou shalt be laughed to scorn, and had in derision, scorn and had in derision, it contains much. In other words, the cup I'm going to give you, going to have you out of your mind. I'm trying, I didn't want to do it, but you wouldn't stop. You shall be filled with drunkenness and sorrow with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of your sister, Samaria. You saw what happened to Samaria? That you wouldn't stop. You got worse. You shall even drink it and suck it out. You're going <laughs> to... He said, I'm going to put so much uh, anger need folk to come against you until 
It's almost like you you drank all of what you can stand, and then I'm gonna break it open and get you. I'm gonna just you gonna suck it out, and then I'm gonna break the cup and pluck off your breast. For I have spoken it, says the Lord God. He said, Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the shares or the ceramics that thereof and pluck off thine own breast. You're gonna be so out of your mind. For I have spoken, it said the Lord God. He said, when I allow these people that you want to come up on you, you will tear your own body up. The thing that you love to give is going to be the thing that you try to take off. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me, you forgot my word, and cast me behind your back, put on the back seat. Therefore, bear thou also the lewdness in thy whoredom. Therefore bear you also your lewdness, that wild sex, and your whoredom. So I'm going to give you the consequences of your action. The Lord said moreover to Ezekiel, son of man, will you judge a whole and a whole Yes, declare unto them their abominations. This is what they did. Tell them I said it, and I saw it. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery. And I've also caused their sons who they bear unto me and gave birth to. To pass for them through the fire to devour them. He said everything that you produce. You and those that you produce. He said, I am going to allow the enemy to come in and destroy you even by fire. Moreover, this day they have done unto me, they have defiled my sanctuary. Let me go back to the 37th verse. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery and have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass pass for them through the fire to devour them. So not God is allowed in the path through the fire. They did all that. You committed to hoard them. But God is going to allow fire. But right, this verse is saying that you committed to hoard them. Then you had children and then you killed your children by some idol worship and by allowing them to be passed through the fire thinking that you're honoring me. And he said, I'm going to let you know I don't play. Moreover this day, because I had to go back and redo the 37 verse. Moreover, this day have, have <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> more you did this day, have you done unto me? What? They have defiled my sanctuary, where I worship, where you worship, and the same day, the same day you committed all them crimes, you came into my house, and have profaned my Sabbath, the day that I told you to set aside, that you could just just breathe, rest. You did all your crimes on that day too. You never stopped. When they had slain their children to the idols, to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. You went out and committed all kind of reckless abominations and then you came in my house and decided to get ready to talk to me. And lo, thus have you done in the midst of my house. You just got through sleeping with that girl in the choir. You just got through standing all, talking on the phone with the pastor all night while his wife laying up there pretending she was asleep. But she's so busy trying to be the first lady and look good until she's got to put up with the crap that goes along with it. Then you tell the people, come and let me lay hands on you. What he said. And furthermore, that you this verse 40. And furthermore, that you have sent for men to come from far. He wants you a man from out of town. Um, to whom a messenger was sent. You can even sit somebody down there and go get him. And lo, they came. For whom you did wash yourself. You got dressed up. Paint your eyes. And deck yourself with ornaments. 
Is he out there? Is he out there? Is he out there? He out there now? Hold on. This is she. Oh, hey, I'll be there in a minute. Okay? I'm glad you came. Yeah, do this color go with my outfit? Mm. Oh, girl, I got my cologne on, I got my earrings on. It's on. And furthermore, that you have sent for men to come from far, and you still doing it. Uh, to whom a messenger was sent, and lo, they came for whom they did what did you wash yourself, paint your eyes, and deck yourself with ornaments, and sat up on a stake the bed. You have oh, your bed was was ready, and a table pre prepared before it, whereupon you have set my incense and my oil, things that I told you. To Keep sacred for me. And a voice of a multitude being at ease was with her. These men came to where you at? Where, 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 where you at? Where you at? Where, you, where, you, where your name? What you say your name is? And when the men of the common sort were brought, drunk men, men that you, you used to sleep with the men with the uniform, now it's like, hey, baby, can I, can, I, can I do to you what I want you to do to me? From the wilderness, which put on, they put a bracelet on you, on your hands, and a beautiful crown upon your heads. He said, "Did do you look good to me?" Then said I unto her, "That was old. Now you were young doing this, and then you got older, and now you are old." And the word says, "Then said I unto her, That was old and adulterous. Will you now commit?" Whoredom with her and she with them, <clears throat> y'all old people, drunk people, just anything. Yet they went into her as they go into a woman that played the harlot. So went they into Ahola and unto Abola, the lewd woman. Old women. By the time you think you got a certain age, you still playing that part. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. So somebody's going to come and teach you the word of God. And after the manner of women that shed blood, because you kill them, folk. Your body is a weapon. You gave to them what somebody gave to you. Because they are adulterous and blood is in their hands. God said, I'm going to send somebody to judge. I'm going to tell you to talk to you. For thus says the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them. I'm going to bring a whole lot of people and will give them to be removed and spoiled. He said, I'm going to come into my land and get you off of it. For thus says the Lord God, I will bring up a company upon them and will give them to be removed and spoiled. And the company shall stone them. Because that's why the folk that found that woman in the adultery. They would use a scripture like, oh, we got to kill you, Jesus, now. Not unless you had done something yourself. Now, those of you that know that you have not committed any sin, go ahead and take the sister out. I ain't saying you were wrong. I ain't saying she, was, she didn't deserve it. But you can't hit her unless you ain't got no sin in you. But he said, these folks going to hit you because you got sin in them. And they don't care about what I say no way. So that's what you're going to get. And the company shall stone them with stones and dispatch them with their sword. They shall slay their sons and daughters and burn up their houses with fire. These are those uh, Babylonians. Thus will I call lewdness to cease. I'm going to stop this sexual activity that you have. Out of the land that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. I'm doing this so the children of 2022 won't think twice about doing this because that's why I want my word taught so they can understand what you're going to get if you don't quit. 
and they shall pay you back or recompense your lewdness upon you. And you shall bear the sins of your idols. And then you'll know that I am the Lord God. So God used as much information that he said, I'm talking to people who understand sex. I'm the husband and you are my wife. And you left me for another man because he had on a suit. But when he got through with you, you were no good for nobody. You started when you were young. And then you kept it up when you were older. And I thought by the time you got to be an old woman, you might have kept your sense. And you still died doing what you were doing when you were young. You didn't change. You had horse ways as a little girl. And now that you're an older woman, you still hold ish. And the Lord is saying, all I'm saying is, anytime you close this book, you will go after instructions, but it will not be mine. And then the things that's going to happen to you based on who you go to after me, and when I tell them to have, you know, have your way with them, that's what they're going to do. They're going to obey me. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. So I remove myself and tell them, sick. So God is saying to us as the believers, stop. Because I'm going to talk about it. If you do it, I'm going to talk about it. And I want you to tell your wife, your children, I want everybody in the family to know about um, Ezekiel 23. I want, I want the whole world to know what happened. I took two women to illustrate a story of what it's like to be your God and you turn your back on me. Time to change.